In this video, I'm going to talk about whether the wargaming volunteers who teach you and I new game systems are in trouble. Most people do not go out into the world looking to get into this hobby. Most people don't go, you know, I would love to paint tiny people and then push them around on a board with other people who also enjoy painting tiny people and roll dice. It doesn't just generally jump into our heads. More often than not, you know somebody who plays some game and then they show it to you and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then after a while it percolates and it percolates and eventually you might get into tabletop wargaming. Or maybe you go to your local store and there's somebody there who's playing with somebody else and they kind of be like, well, yeah, you know, it's this. And they sort of explain it and you get the idea. And nowadays, of course, you can go online, you know, like you're doing right now and research a lot of stuff. But there's a group of people that have been helping out you and I, people who are game players and also the game companies for a long time. In marketing, there's this idea of demo teams. Um, Sometimes they're also known as street teams. Depends on kind of the the usage. If you're a a concert or an event that's coming to a city, having volunteers who go out and kind of plaster posters around, stuff like that, those are street teams because they're out on the streets. But otherwise, it's usually demo teams as they're referred to or something like that. Sometimes it's an internship. You know, it depends. In wargaming, traditionally, those people have a name that relates to the game. So... When I was playing uh, and, and and kind of volunteering for Golem Arcana, uh, it was the uh, Envoy system. So I was an Envoy for Golem Arcana. Uh, Private Your Press has Press Gangers. Infinity has, I think, War Corps. Uh, henchmen for Weird Games for Malifaux. So there's a lot of different types of people. And what happens is that normally these people get some sort of benefit for volunteering their time to teach people about this particular game system. And normally the benefit is usually points that they can save up to buy, you know, buy product off of the website or whatever, direct from the manufacturer. So that's kind of how the the give and take of the system really happens. However, speaking of press gangers from Privateer Press, the makers of War Machine and Hordes, something came across my, I was going to say my desk, but I actually brought it on my phone uh, this morning, as a matter of fact. Yesterday, on the 8th, there was a press release that was put out on the Privateer Press website that said that their press ganger um, system, which has been their volunteer you know, demo team for, I think, more than a decade, and I think there's more than a thousand press gangers worldwide, that system was being shut down. Um, just, I mean, not that day. It's going to shut down, I think, at the end of April. But they, basically, they were just coming out and saying, we're shutting down the system. We're shutting down the program. And, you know, it's been great, but it's going to be over at the end of April. And at the time, I was like, well, that's really weird. Games Workshop years ago used to have a system like this, and it was called, you were called an overlord. No, outrider. You were called an outrider. And uh, and it's so long ago that I've forgotten. But they had a thing like that. You were an outrider. You were a volunteer. You would go out and do things. You'd get certain benefits and whatever. But you would do demos for Games Workshop, and then they got rid of that a long time ago. Now, admittedly, Games Workshop, old Games Workshop, did a lot of weird things. But to get rid of the people who are at the front lines trying to teach people about your game seems a little weird. So when Privateer Press did it, I thought, well, that seems very odd. It seems like something that old Games Workshop would do. I wonder why they're doing it. And I, I, I couldn't really figure it out. I thought, well, maybe. I mean, sometimes when companies are not doing well financially, they have to pull back on certain programs. Okay, so I thought, well, maybe that's the case. But it doesn't seem like it. I don't know. I don't know much about, the obviously, the financial workings of their company. But they seem to be doing okay. But then I did a little bit more research over the course of the day. And I started to find out some more information. From one of my sources, which... It feels weird now to have sources in the industry, but, um, you know, that's where I'm at. So uh, from one of my sources, they suggested that from what they understood, the reasoning was not because necessarily they were, you know, um, financially strapped or anything along those lines. The reasoning is from kind of a lawsuit, not against Privateer Press, but actually against Wizards of the Coast that came about last year. 
magic judges, judges, people who judge magic tournaments and events, Magic the Gathering, the card game, uh, they get sort of benefits the same way that, say, most demo team people get some sort of benefits. They either get special cards that only judges get, maybe, or I don't know exactly what they got, but they got some stuff. And a couple of magic judges out west in the California region, from what I understand, sued Wizards of the Coast because they said, oh, well, since you're paying us, we're now employees. I don't know a lot about the, the case. You can go onto Wizards of the Coast's website. They have a press release kind of explaining what's going on and how it's basically bunk in their mind. But of course, that's what they have to do. I don't know which way's going either way, but I have a suspicion that something like that is kind of indicating which way the wind's blowing. So the source that I talked to said they were pretty sure the reason that uh, you know, Privateer Press had decided to get rid of the Press Ganger uh, program was because they wanted to head that kind of thing off at the pass. They had a lot of people that they had given a lot of points to, and a lot of those points had turned into product that they had been, you know, then purchasing with points off the website for Privateer Press and all this stuff. And they were concerned about potential lawsuits down the road, I suppose. So they decided we should really just kind of cut this off ahead of time. Now, there was also a, a purported email to press gangers that got out on Reddit that said that, well, it was actually because it's just become so unwieldy to keep track of a thousand different, you know, press gangers and all of their points and all that kind of stuff that they just can't afford to do it anymore. That kind of sounds a little bit like bunk, but I don't know. I mean, first of all, who knows if that email is even real because it's on Reddit. So, you know, take a grain of salt, but the, the press release that they put out is definitely real. And it said that they just can't they as an organization just can't support the press gangers as well as they would like. So maybe those things line up. But I think that maybe it's a combination of that and a combination of making sure that they don't get sued down the road because if this precedent from the case with the Magic Judges and Wizards of the Coast causes some sort of snowball, not only could it affect privateer press, but for you and me, we could see it starting to affect all the different tabletop wargaming companies. So all of a sudden, there might not be any henchmen uh, for, you know, Malifaux. So if you've got a burgeoning kind of Malifaux group going on around where you live, that may become a little bit more difficult to keep sustained just because you're not going to have a person who's official from Weird Games available to run events or to give out prizes or any of that kind of stuff, do that sort of support. These small companies, we have to understand, we think of our small industry as like the whole world, but really our industry is not just a small industry, it's a tiny industry in comparison to the rest of the world. So these companies are thinking to themselves, we need to make sure we're not getting sued and they're having to weigh that against, but we still need people to know about our product. So the question is, I guess, how are we gonna go forward? How are they gonna go forward into being able to get out there and teach more people about their product? And that's a very good question, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I mean, I suppose there's the internet. And there's something to be said about trying to get the internet to become, for lack of a better term, one of your demo team. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work. I think that they're also going to try to get the stores to sort of do that a little bit more. It sounded a little bit like from the press release that I'd read that they were planning on getting the stores a little bit more involved in kind of advocating for these game companies, which is great in theory, but I know store owners, they have a lot of things on their plate. So for them to then also now have to sit there and try to figure out how to get people interested in game A, game B, game C, game D, they're just not going to have the time. They don't physically have the time. Sometimes they have an employee who likes this game, so that person can kind of become the, you know, the person who's going to tell everybody about that game. Great. But, you know, maybe that guy doesn't work there much longer. You know, he takes off and goes and gets a different job. Or maybe he decides he stops playing that game. Or maybe she's like, you know, I don't like the people in this group anymore, so I'm not going to play the game. So there's all kinds of little things. The volunteers all had a sort of an incentive, obviously. They wanted to get points so they could get more product. And the people who are doing this now at the stores, if they're the ones that are being kind of leaned on to say, hey, you guys need to become our demo team... Uh, that's not going to go well for the, the, the manufacturers. So let's get down to brass tacks. What does this mean for you and I as normal, everyday gamers? Well, um, for one thing, I think that if there's a game out there that you like, 
that you think more people in your area should play, you need to become an advocate for that game. I've been saying that far before this whole kerfuffle happened. You can go back and watch the video about becoming a gaming advocate. Pachow. It's an older video, but I talk about if you want to teach people, if you want people in your local area to play Mercs, let's say, then you're going to need to build two teams of Mercs, which is frankly quite easy because there's only five guys per side. And then you're going to have to maybe go to a shop or whatever and then sit there and then be like, hey, you want to learn how to play this? And then just basically be your own demo guy. Now, the benefit to you is that maybe you get new people in the area interested in the game and you have more opponents. But that's pretty much it. You're obviously not out here, and neither am I, to sell product for some manufacturer so that they can make money off of you and your efforts. You are doing it because you want to have more opponents. So you have to understand, and so do the manufacturers, that a line will have to be drawn. Obviously, you will probably put some effort into it if you're interested in getting a new game to fire off in your region, but you're not going to put as much effort into it as you might have if you were getting some sort of benefit from the manufacturer like you used to be able to. And we'll see if the other companies follow suit along with Privateer Press or if they're just being nervous for no reason. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's kind of a strange place to be in right now, I think, if you're a manufacturer and if you're a person that likes uh, maybe, a, I don't want to say an unpopular game, but maybe, you know, you have to kind of think about at which point do you want to become an adv advocate and a demo person for the game for very little to no benefit. Due to one of my, uh, 